everybody, Josh the RV Nerd with Bish's RV, and I was recently invited up to one of Lippert's uh, facilities where they test new things, specifically their new ABS system, anti-lock brakes for towable RVs. And as soon as the words came out of my mouth, as soon as I heard about this, I was like, this is like, this is massive. What? Why is this just now getting into the industry? And I went on a test drive and unfortunately I didn't have all my uh, camera equipment with me that day, but they were kind enough to send me some footage that we're going to go through. And I'm gonna talk through this. And I think when we're done seeing the results of this, it's gonna, I think this could be potentially a game changer to the tune of, I almost want this to be a standard safety item on every single towable RV out there. I, I frankly can't understand why it's not. So here's what I mean. Here's a little digital example. If you're in a panic braking situation and you happen to be a computer person, this is what it might look like. But you get the idea. If you have to like spike the brakes and weave around something, whether it's some kid chased a basketball into the road or there's a tree branch down or something like that. Uh, when you hit the brakes really hard, you ever feel your vehicle like you hear it go nah, nah, and like it feels like you're kind of sort of sliding forward a little bit. What's happening is when, instead of your wheels locking up and then you lose control and slide because you can't control a sliding wheel, basically. Um, it allows the, the brakes to release a little bit so that your vehicle can steer where you need to go. But trailers don't have that. Well, most trailers don't. We're gonna get into that. There are some now that do. You're gonna wanna pay attention to that, I think. Um, uh, most trailers, when you spike the brakes, your vehicle will start slowing down, but the trailer slides, and as a result, it doesn't slow down properly. So what happens is the trailer ends up trying to pass you. The trailer ends up sliding one direction or the other, and it tries to whiplash, whip tail around you. And what ends up happening is you end up spinning around on the road and facing the wrong direction. How many times, anybody who's any sort of Facebook groups, we've seen those photos where there's a the aftermath photo where someone's uh, taking a picture where the trailer ended up passing them, you know what I mean? Like that's a uh, that's a scary thing. That's a real thing that actually can happen out there. This prevents that. Now, what this is, uh, what this does is basically the system normally just sits there and monitors in real time the speed of the wheels at versus the braking, and it doesn't actually try to do anything. And it monitors whether the trailer is pivoting off axis. Uh, from the um, from the vehicle, basically. And if the, the trailer starts pivoting off axis and the wheels are locking up, what it will allow to happen is uh, the appropriate wheels, the brakes to release and those wheels to turn so that the trailer continues to follow you the way it's supposed to. Um, basically, it just keeps everything safe in line. And what I love about this, when you're in that holy crap panic uh, brake scenario situation, you don't have time to really think about what's the trailer doing. You're doing just the best you can not to get yourself killed, not to hit something. There's too much going on too quickly. Well, now you don't have to worry about the trailer. Now you don't have to peek back there after you've avoided something. Now the trailer is just behind you, following you the way it's supposed to. And that is, it, it's funny because it's so simple. It almost makes me mad that it hasn't been around before. Cause like, this is, I think a big deal. People, lives? could potentially be saved by this. Not even being dramatic, being real about it. Um, thing is, this is not actually designed to like decrease stopping distance, but from what I saw, it generally will a little bit. And have you ever, not even towing a trailer, have you ever come up to like a red light or something or you're messing with the radio and you looked up and you're like, oh no. And like you spike the brakes and you end up like this far from the vehicle's bumper in front of you. Well, sometimes just a couple feet, a couple inches makes a huge bit of difference. Um, Lippert brought a, a group they call the Lippert Scouts out. These are actual RVers, actual consumers who are willing to like test some of these products and look at some of these things. So uh, this first one actually came from the Navistar Proving Grounds and look at the way this trailer is loaded. The weight, a huge, huge amount of weight is located like at or behind the axle in the worst possible way to load weight on a trailer. Almost literally designed to induce sway and to lose control. And look at the difference between the ABS being on and off. With the ABS off, that trailer's whipping around that truck and much further, that truck was about to start spinning around and facing the wrong way. That trailer could have fishtailed into head-on traffic depending on the road situation. Now, the uh, the second test they did here kind of hit home to me because as a Michigander, you know, we have all four seasons around here and we learn how to drive in snow and ice pretty well around here, but 
ice is ice and breaking is breaking. And sometimes it's Jesus take the wheel and you don't have control. Look at the difference in this. Again, uh, that, that same trailer, that same disaster load in one of those things, you're, you know, if there's a pedestrian in the road or something like that, you took them out. You straight flat blasted them and pancaked those kids. In the other situation, the kids are scared, but they go home another day. Like, the difference is dramatic with that ABS feature on and off. To give you another look at this one, they mounted some cameras off the back of that vehicle. And, and look at the difference in, in how much it does or doesn't pivot off axis. It is insane. The difference in one of those scenarios, um, you probably need a change of underwear and maybe a gurney and a trip to the hospital. In the other scenario, you only need a change of underwear. <laughs> Thankfully, you probably have some back in the camper that you can stop and use. <laughs> one more test here, the last test. Uh, instead of just a cargo trailer with a theoretical load, what about an actual travel trailer? So here's like a 35 foot multi-slide trailer. And look at the size of the vehicle. It is a big one ton dually. It is more than enough vehicle to handle that trailer. I think we would all agree, right? Um, not when you're hitting the brakes in adverse road conditions, whether it's wet and slippery, whether it's snow and ice, you know, all kinds of different situations and scenarios. In one of those cases, that big dually again was about to spin around and lose control. In the other situation, Maintain complete control, stopped in a straight line, never had to deviate from their own lane. If like, you know, for some reason, all of a sudden a bunch of brake lights fire in front of you and you don't even know why, you just know that you need to stop and you can't change lanes, would have been fine, probably, you know, versus the, the other scenario in which you're definitely getting into someone else's driving territory. Or, you know, if the trailer fishtails in oncoming traffic, if the trailer fishtails off the road, it's going to pull you off the road once it hits that curb. All of those situations basically avoided. So question here, where can you get this? Where can I get it? And what kind of blew me away about the answer to this is it's actually already in the marketplace and very little discussion has been done on this. It is currently at the time of this filming's release exclusive to Grand Design fifth wheels like Reflection, Solitude, Momentum. The, the big premium level Grand Design fifth wheels right now are the only ones that have this system on there, that little ABS module. And it, it really kind of shocks me that there hasn't been more talk from Grand Design about that. And I, I wish that I would have had more insights into this so I could have talked about it sooner. And I really, I, I appreciate that Lippert wanted to get a hold of me so I could kind of help, you know, they, they took me on the test drive and everything. Um, but... That is a, about a one-year exclusivity, and this fall, that opportunity will open up where some other manufacturers aren't going to be required necessarily, but may be able to start putting that on their RVs. So as you're looking down the line, if you're worried on a big rig about towing safety, you might look into that. And right now, it's only about on big RVs, but even smaller RVs, like what if you have a tow package SUV, a trailer can still, even if it's well within your towing specs, a trailer can still very quickly muscle that thing around in an emergency uh, braking situation. It might be something you want to keep on your towing and going safety list effectively down the line. Now, what's also really, really cool about this, right now this is designed to be an anti-lock braking system. But due to the way that it works, due to the way that it monitors whether the trailer pivots away from the vehicle, due to the way that it can release and control the brakes, and by the way, the system is completely compatible with, like, they tested uh, Forge, GMC, uh, uh, Chevy pickups, uh, Rams, all kinds of stuff. They've, they've tested every vehicle they can. They can't get the system to not work with a vehicle. It's been compatible with everything because one of the things that it does, even when uh, the, the system will release one wheel and allow it to spin a little bit, it's still telling the vehicle that, yes, we understand that you're sending the appropriate braking. The vehicle still understands it's sending the braking. What happens is the ABS module acts like a gateway and it will just occasionally cut off that sort of signal to individual wheels. But because of the way that all works, this system can actually act as a trailer-based anti-sway system with no additional hardware required. So when it first comes out and anybody with a, like a 2023 Grand Design fifth wheel currently has this ABS system, when the uh, anti-sway module basically comes available, it will literally be just software. It's something that you could download and uh, via their app 
and push over to your system with a firmware update, um, I I'm, I'd be surprised if there won't be some kind of subscription for that extra enhanced service. But basically, ABS will be standard with the module with the ability to opt into anti-sway uh, scenarios. And that is very interesting to me because, again, when we start talking to smaller, lighter weight vehicles, and there are a lot of trailers that should not use an anti, or pardon me, a lot of vehicles, uh, certain like SUVs and stuff with like unibody designs that can do some towing but are not supposed to be used with weight distribution and anti-sway hitching because it will tweak the frame. This is a way to potentially maintain uh, serious control of your trailer without needing all kinds of extra hardware that could screw up your vehicle's factory warranty. Like I said, as soon as I, I thought about it, I'm like, ABS is required on vehicles. Why is it not required on trailers? And as, as soon as I saw this, I'm like, I, wa I want this to be a thing that becomes standard on every towable RV made basically now and moving forward. I do not believe in putting safety before the sale. I'm sure it costs a couple hundred bucks, but that's, that's juice that is worth its squeeze to me. The safety of uh, myself, my family, my, you know, my wife, my kid, my dog, the other motorists on the road, that's a very, very small price to pay. And, and frankly, I don't think it's something you'd really even overtly notice on a price tag. Um, but you definitely overtly notice an accident, a hospital bill, up to potentially a loss of life. And that is what I see. This is something that can keep people safe especially when in the last two years, we've had 15.5 million first time RVers on the road. People who are not well experienced at towing a lot of RVs and even plenty of experienced people could benefit from this, but keeping more people safe who are less familiar with handling, I want that. I want that all day long and I wanna see this on this. But the thing is, manufacturers do not really make those decisions in a way you do as customers and you will force manufacturers and tell them whether they need to or not need to do this based on your buying patterns. So it's really up to you folks at home. My job is to make you aware of it from here. It's up to you whether you think it's worthwhile or not to voice your opinions and to reflect that with your buying patterns. And I am very eager to see in the next year or two how prolific this becomes. I'm predicting that within the next two to three years, nearly every fifth wheel and creeping down into premium level travel trailers, you'll start to see this creep up there. And I, frankly, I'm all for it. But that's my two cents. I'd love to hear what you think about this, what you think about the concept, um, whether you think it should be on stuff or not. You know, just an idea. I'm just one guy. I'd love to hear from all of you folks out there. So if you appreciate how we're bringing you this info and this insight, even when this exists and like no one's really talking about it a whole lot, please hit that subscribe button, leave us some notes, tell us thanks. I don't normally do things this much classroom version. Like I don't normally sit here like a guy shouting at his uh, dashboard of his F-150 on a TikTok video, but currently it's pouring outside and I can't really demonstrate this by just walking around the lot anyway. So until next time, take care, stay safe, have fun, and don't read the sign everyone.